What is legion? And what does the Bible tell us about this? Mark chapter 5 covers the topic of legion. Mark chapter 5 describes the incident in which Jesus healed the man by casting out demons in great detail. Jesus visits the Gerasenes region and is immediately confronted by a demon-possessed man who lived among the tombs, cut himself with stones, and cannot be kept in captivity. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Mark chapter 5 verses 1 to 5 Another man with an unclean spirit approached Jesus once they arrived on the other side of the sea. Mark has already told us about Jesus' encounters with demoniacs, but this account is more personal. Mark describes how life was for this particular man. He first lived in the tombs. He was a complete social outcast. He didn't have any human companions. Rather, all of his human companions were dead. Second, he was out of control, though individuals tried to bind him up with bonds. Because of his demonically inspired strength, no one could subdue him. Third, he endured self-inflicted agony. He was awake at all hours, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Mark chapter 5, verses 6 to 8. The man's external torture was the result of internal turmoil. He wasn't just insane, he was under demonic control. The demon inhabiting this man, like previous demons Jesus dealt with, recognized Jesus for who he truly is the Son of the Most High God. Mark chapter 1, verses 23 to 24. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Furthermore, he acknowledged Jesus' power and authority. Despite the fact that the Son of God wanted the demon to leave, the demon begged, don't torture me. When Jesus asked the demon what its name was, the demon replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. A legion was the largest unit in the Roman army in common usage. A legion at the time had an average of 5,000 fighting men, though it could have thousands more or fewer. As a result, the term legion refers to any large group of beings, a multitude. When the demon in Mark chapter 5 said its name was legion, it meant that the demoniac of the Gerasenes was possessed by a large number of unclean spirits. The Bible does not specify how many demons made up the legion within the man. When Jesus cast them out, they went into a herd of pigs that was nearby. Legion drove the pigs down a hill and into the sea where they all drowned. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, Send us among the pigs. Allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, 
about two thousand in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Mark chapter 5 verses 9 to 13 Because Jesus asked to know the name of the demon, we know that the demon who had been talking was actually just a representative. My name is Legion, because we are many. To put it another way, all of his demonic relatives, including his aunts, uncles, cousins, and other relatives, had moved in with him. They implored with Jesus to grant them permission to move into their new dwelling, which was a group of pigs. Therefore Jesus let the impure spirits to inhabit the impure animals, which immediately fled, into the sea and drowned themselves there. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. Mark chapter 5 verses 14 to 17 when people from the local town and the area around it heard about it, they came to see the man who had previously been possessed by a demon, now that he was in his right mind. No more living among the tombs, no more shackled hands and feet, no more bleeding from his own hands. But how did these people react to such a magnificent healing? They pleaded with Jesus to leave their area. Why? Mark claims that they reacted this way after learning about the man and the pigs, 2,000 pigs to be precise. All of that pork cost a lot of money. If Jesus kept doing things like this, he'd destroy the local economy. It's worth noting that their livelihood was more important to them than the release of a human from demonic oppression. They valued material possessions over spiritual ones. Because it served his purposes, Jesus had no reason not to accept the legion's proposal. First, it resulted in the freedom from the demons. Second, pigs were deemed unclean animals under Jewish law, making them a perfect symbol and safe haven for demons. Finally, accepting their bid had no effect on the demons' eternal fate on Judgment Day. More importantly, Jesus was not committing a sin by accepting the demon's offer. In contrast, Jesus' encounter with Satan in the wilderness was quite different. Satan made specific demands of Christ, with the intent of leading Jesus into disobedience if Jesus complied. As a result, Jesus used scripture to rebuke Satan and refused to comply with Satan's demands. This is the primary difference between the two cases. In Matthew chapter 8, the demon's request did not cause Jesus to sin, whereas Satan's demands on Jesus were intended to cause him to sin. Demons were well aware of who Jesus was, Son of God, and of their impending doom. This serves as a reminder that the kingdom of darkness and light are quite aware of the judgment. This does not explain why the demons begged to enter the swine. It's possible they didn't want to leave the area where they had been successful in wreaking havoc on the people. Perhaps they were drawn to the filthy animals because they themselves were filthy. The demons may have made this strange request because it was their last chance to avoid confinement in the abyss, where evil spirits perish. Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 to 6 and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven under the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and upon them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. 
and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Matthew chapter 5 verse 18 This particular chapter has been filled with begging. The demons begged Jesus not to torment or expel them from the area. They then begged to be led into a herd of pigs. The people begged Jesus to leave. However, we see some God-honoring begging here. The man who had been possessed by a demon begged Jesus to let him stay with him. He knew Jesus had delivered him, and he didn't want to abandon him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people, and tell them how much the Lord has done for you, and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and all the people were amazed. Mark chapter 5 verses 19 and 20 Jesus had other plans for the man. Go home to your own people and report to them how much the Lord has done for you. In other words, go home to those who knew you and give God the glory for who you are now. And so the man did it throughout Decapolis' ten cities. Everyone was amazed when he told them how much Jesus had done for him. Given his background, he was most likely a fairly well-known individual. Those who knew him needed to hear his testimony to understand what happens when God's kingdom enters a person's life. People in your life need to hear what Jesus has done for you if you are a Christian. About 2,000 pigs were slain. This detail implies that a legion was made up of around 2,000 demons. The afflicted man's untamable nature and great strength, strength that of course was no match for God, could be attributed to the large number of demons. A legion is mentioned again in the context of spirit beings, this time of good angels. When Jesus was arrested, Peter pulled out a sword and wounded a member of the mob nearby. Jesus bandaged the wound and told Peter to put his sword away. Matthew chapter 26 verses 51 to 53 And suddenly, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword, struck the servant of the high priest, and cut off his ear. But Jesus said to him, Put your sword in its place, for all who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father, and he will provide me with more than twelve legions of angels. The Lord reminded Peter that if he needed assistance, he could request more than twelve legions of angels. That could be up to sixty thousand angels. But that wasn't the point Jesus was making. Rather, it was to remind the terrified disciples that God is always in control of all circumstances, even during the horrifying injustice of his own son's murder. It's interesting to note that the Bible refers to legions of both holy angels and demons. Legion is a military term that fits several biblical descriptions of spiritual warfare. Daniel chapter 10 verses 4 to 13 On the twenty-fourth day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river the Tigris, I looked up, and there before me was a man dressed in linen, with a belt of fine gold from Euphus around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, 
but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who were highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I am about to speak to you, and stand up, for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me twenty-one days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. How can we stand against such considerable and powerful enemies? God thoroughly equips believers for battle against satanic forces. Put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 20 Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with a belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with a readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, Words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. As Christians, we are more than conquerors through Christ. Romans chapter 8 verses 37 to 39 No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our commander is Jesus. He is the one who with a single word dispatched the legion demons. He is the one who will one day cast out legion and all other demons into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew chapter 25 verse 41 Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Revelation chapter 20, verses 9 and 10. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, 
where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The Bible clearly speaks of demons or unclean spirits. We know they do exist. The Bible says the following things about their characteristics. They are spirit beings. They are personal intelligent beings. They are unclean, vicious spirits. Some are more evil than others. And they are numerous. The fact that demons are so numerous makes the work of Satan something that takes place everywhere. This is another indication that demons are numerous. In closing, what worship song makes you feel closer to God? <laughs>